The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm Tammy Grimes. The Greek god of love was called Eros. Eros was the first of the Greek gods, born from the cosmic egg, a physical and elemental force, a divinity of fertility. Now, millenniums later, love is still the prime principle of life. We celebrate and exalt it, as though our very lives depended on it, as in truth they do. And not only our lives, but the lives of all our descendants, Forever. Is it a deal? It's a deal. You like the idea? It's all right. You want the job? I've got nothing better to do. You approve of the plan? Sounds okay. Oh, really? I wish you could summon up a little enthusiasm. Lady, I lost my enthusiasm for anything a long time ago. If I ever had any. <laughs> Our mystery drama, The Last Plan, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric, who also stars as the woman. I'll be back shortly with that one. We spoke at the opening of the Greek god Eros. Now we must tell you something of Thanatos. Thanatos, brother of sleep and the night, dweller in the lower world, and the personification of death. What, you may be asking, have these two, Eros and Thanatos, to do with each other? And what place do they have in a simple radio drama? Listen, and we'll try to tell you. I seem to have this cat. He wandered in one day and simply stayed. I can't tell if he's happy here or not. I don't know whether she likes me or hates me. I think to her I'm an adequate housekeeper. Not the best, not the worst, just adequate. She may move on any day now. That's what she seems to be thinking. As soon as she's figured it out. Meanwhile, call the phone. Well, it breaks the monotony. <coughs> yes? Hello? Hello. Is that you? Of course. Well, this is me. Can I come over? Why? Listen, it's happened again. Oh, no, not again. Yes, and it's worse than ever. Well, what do you want with me? I have to talk to somebody. It's getting serious. Well, what do you think I can do? Figure out a way to stop it. But it's been going on for years, years. I told you, it's getting worse. It's driving me crazy. You ask me, you're both crazy. He's crazy. That's who's crazy. Look, can I even talk to you about it? I don't like to get involved in something like this. Oh, that's what everybody says. I don't want to get involved. Well, somebody's got to get involved because things can't go on this way. Why can't they? You've made out all right so far. I told you, it's getting worse. Something awful is going to happen. Please, I need to talk it over. Please. All right. Is it okay to come over now? Yes, yes, yes. Boring. It's boring. Whatever else you may say about the young, they're boring. And these two have been boring me for years. Everything to them is so important. Whereas to me, almost nothing is. Except perhaps that errant cat. When she fixes that long, unwavering gaze on me. What's behind those yellow eyes with the thin black slits down their center? I wonder, is it approval or contempt? Is it hatred or is it... Oh, no. (laughs) 
No, it couldn't be love. Could it? Oh, no, not even affection and certainly not love. Oh, she's here with her interminable doubts, fears, and complaints. Come in. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. Give me your coat and go sit down. I really do appreciate this. Well, so far, there's nothing to appreciate. Well, just seeing you. Go sit down. Oh, I didn't know you had a cat. I don't. The cat has me. What's her name? I haven't given her one. I'm waiting to see what name she's given me. And the nose, what that'll be. Oh, you're weird. You know it? Am I? Yes, I suppose I am. I think I've been weird for a long time. Sit down. That's probably why I like you. Because I'm weird? It's a strange reason to like someone. Oh, I know. But I feel you know things. Well, I don't. I hardly know anything. For certain, that is. But that's what I mean. If that last remark signifies anything, it escapes me. Oh, me too. Well, at least I'm glad to see you've recovered somewhat from your recent hysteria over the telephone. Oh, yes, that. Perhaps now you can tell me calmly and quietly the reason for it. He tried to strangle me. Oh, really? When was this? At breakfast. Any special reason? He thought I put poison in his coffee. Oh? And did you? Certainly not. Would I do a thing like that? I don't know. Would you? I love him. Uh Uh-huh. I think he's the most wonderful man in the world. Very difficult living with the most wonderful man in the world. Quite a strain. Well, don't you think he's wonderful? I hardly ever think about him at all. You'd better start thinking about him now. Because one of these days, he's going to kill me. If you don't stop him. Me stop him? How can I stop him? Oh, you'll think of something. Your confidence is touching. You don't want me to die, do you? No. No, I don't want you to die. Not actively, that is. Well, then... But do I want you to live? That's the question, isn't it? Do I actively, positively want you to live? I'll have to think about that. But I'm young, I'm attractive, successful... I have a whole life ahead of me. All true, all true. But so many innocent victims have been young and attractive and successful, haven't they? Nevertheless, they died. Well, don't let it happen to me. Why don't you leave him? When I love him? Oh, I forgot. Where would I go? Any place. You're rich enough. And let him take over? He would, you know, the day after I left town. No, he's just waiting for me to do something like that. Looks like a hopeless situation. It can't be. You have to think of something. You have to. Well, I'll try. Oh, good. I said I'll try. I can't promise anything. Oh, if you really try, you'll think of something. I know you will. Uh, I have to go now. Just keep on thinking. Keep trying. Remember, I'm counting on you to save my life. But boring. Boring in the extreme. Why do young people think there's a solution for everything? Must be, has to be. Don't they know? No, they don't know. They don't know anything. Because they're young. What's that, a visitor again? Why don't people call first? Ask permission. Who will? Hello. All right to come in? What do you want? Well, is it okay to come in? You let her come in. Why not me? She told you she was here? Yeah. So is it all right to come in? You let her, so why not me? Did she tell you why she was here? She didn't have to tell me. It was the same old thing. I know that. Well, wasn't it? Ah, never mind. I know it was. She said you tried to choke her to death at breakfast. Ah, it's all in her head. I wouldn't have done it. I just got mad and... Well, first thing I knew, but I, I wouldn't have done it, not not actually done it. I love her. I mean, she's the greatest, the best. I mean, she's super. Look, is, is it all right if I come in for a minute? Come in for a minute, no more. Good, thanks very much. Oh, hey, she got a cat. <laughs> is she friendly? I don't know. I haven't had time to find out. Sit down if you want to. Hey, she's got funny eyes, hasn't she? Who has? The cat. Hey, look, it looks like she's sizing you up. 
sizing me up. Yeah, you, me, everybody. The whole world, the whole setup. Are you going to use your minute talking about a cat? No, no. Or the world situation? No, the situation between her and me. Something's got to be done about it. That's what she said. Well, she's right. I mean, something's got to be done. We can't go on this way. It's, it's just impossible. You can see that, can't you? I'm not sure I can. Well, you see, she's, she's got this idea that, that I'm out to get her. And you're not? No, of course I'm not. Mm, go on. Well, so she's, she's trying to defend herself against me. And how does she figure on doing that? By getting me first. Can't you see that? Maybe I'm stupid. Tell me more. Well, that's why she started putting this stuff in my coffee. What sort of stuff? Who knows? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should try and, and find out. Then I could, I could find the antidote, keep it handy. Sounds reasonable. Probably one of those things that works slowly, takes a long time. She probably started out with just a little, and then, then she kept adding more and more until finally I could taste it. <laughs> yeah, I waited till I was perfectly sure that was what she was doing, and finally there was no doubt about it. Absolutely no doubt at all. Well, then I saw red. I mean, a man can't just sit there like a lump and let himself be poisoned to death, right? Um, yes, right. Right, so that's when I went for a throat. Mm -hmm. Well, I had to, didn't I? If you were sure. I had to let her know I knew... Knew what? What she was up to. What's the matter with you? I mean, I just explained the whole thing to you, didn't I? Holy... No, 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 no. Calm down. Tell me what you want me to do. I, wa I want you to think of something, some way to stop it, because we can't go on like this. No, I can see you can't. Has it ever occurred to you that perhaps you're both irrational, even insane? <laughs> We're as sane as you are. Is that saying so much? Oh, now, listen, we've always depended on you. You're so much older. Gee, thanks. Well, I mean, you're wiser. You're more educated. You you've read a lot. You've been places. You've seen things. You've done things. If anybody can figure this out, you can. All I can say is I'll try. Now, go on home, and I'll see what I can come up with. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. I'll be in touch. <laughs> It's late. Even the cat is asleep. Worn out with watching me. Or perhaps simply bored. Who knows about cats? Not I. It's laughable, really. I can't even understand a common cat. How am I to keep two ridiculous children from mutual murder? Why did I ever say I'd make the attempt? It's not too late to back out. No. Wait. Wait. Wait, hold on a minute. It's a possibility. Just a possibility. If he'd do it, if he could. Oh, but of course he could. He can do anything. And I know he'd do it for me. Hello? I didn't wake you, did I? No. If I did, I'm sorry. You didn't? I'd like to see you. What about? I may have a job for you. Oh? You free tomorrow? What time? Any time. I'll be here all day. I'll be over in the morning. You won't be sorry you made the trip. See you then. The cat's awake. Her yellow eyes are fixed on me with that calculating look. Did she listen to my whole conversation? Did she approve or disapprove? What do I care? She's only a cat. But I care. I care a lot. that presents itself? How Eros cohabits with Thanatos and the result is conflict? How life exists side by side in the same house with death? In the act to follow, we shall attempt to explore further this dichotomy in the story called The Last Plan. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yet each man kills the thing he loves. By each let this be heard. Some do it with a bitter look. Some with a flattering word. The coward does it with a kiss. The brave man with a sword. These despairing lines were composed in 1898 by Oscar Wilde. But let us remember that he wrote them from Reading Jail, where he'd been confined under the most humiliating and degrading circumstances. The cat has been staring at me all morning, and I have been staring back. It's true that humans can eventually make an animal shift its gaze. By an effort of will, I could make this cat look away. But I cannot avoid the feeling that she is simply disgusted by what she sees or made uncomfortable by what she considers to be atrocious manners on my part. Ah, there he is at last. How like him to make me wait. Well, it's about time. I said this morning. It's almost noon. It's still morning. Well, if you want to be petty about it. Nearly precise. Don't sit there. You'll squash the cat. Oh, sorry. I didn't know you got a cat. She took up residence here one day for no good reason. Get rid of her if you don't like her. I can't decide. Sit over there. Can I get you something to drink? I don't drink. You know that. Well, I forgot. So? What's the proposition? I haven't got all day. Oh, I hoped you would have. Don't try that kittenish stuff on me. I don't go for it. What's the proposition? Lay it out for me. Well, it concerns two young friends of mine. Acquaintances, really. Friendship connotes some sort of equality, don't you think? Some community of interest. Both of which are impossible between them and me because of their youth. In your age. Well, my maturity, I'd prefer to call it that. So what's the project? What have you got in mind? Where do I fit in? Well, both of them came to see me yesterday, begging for help. It seems they're trying to kill each other. So? Yesterday, so he says, he tried to poison him. Put something in his morning coffee. Actually, according to his version of it, she'd been poisoning his coffee for some time. But after a while, he began to taste it, and yesterday he became positive that was what she was trying to do. So? So he went for her throat, trying to choke her to death, she says. I take it he didn't succeed, or she wouldn't have called you? No, but he frightened her badly, which, according to him, is what he was trying to do. You see, he's convinced she plans to kill him in self-defense, because she believes he means to kill her. So, to protect himself, he has to let her know that if she tries to kill him, he will kill her. Purely a matter of self-defense, so he says. Sounds like they weren't getting along. Yes, it does sound that way, doesn't it? On the other hand, each claims to be devoted to the other. Mm -hmm. So, they both come to me asking me to devise a way to keep them from this... this reciprocal assassination. I said I'd think about it and see if I could come up with something. Well, did you? I racked my brains, and I couldn't think of a thing. It's not as though I was really interested in them and their foolish problem. They're young, self-absorbed, self-righteous, self-important. Who are they? Well, I don't think I should tell you that until you hear the plan I finally devised. After you've heard it, if you consent to it, then I'll give you their names and all pertinent information. You can ask anything you like. One thing I would like to ask up front. Have they got money? Money? Heavens, yes. They may not have brains or sensitivity or common sense, but money, they have untold quantities of money. Enough to afford me? They could afford 20 of you. Are they fighting about money? Well, I'm not sure. That may be it. How to manage it, perhaps. But why that should be a bone of contention, I'm sure I don't know. They have so much of it. So what's the big plan you've come up with? And how do I fit into it? Oh, I'll tell you. It'll necessitate your watching them every minute of the day and night. I can do that. As soon as either one of them makes an aggressive move, you'll kill them both. Uh-huh. What am I supposed to take as an aggressive move? Well, that'll have to be agreed upon in advance. But who makes the decision? What well, I'm getting at. Who gives me my orders? They've got to come from somewhere, don't they? Well, I think they should come from me. 
I suppose. It's your plan. I'm just the executioner. Are you trying to be funny? Me? I was never funny. You know that. I do know. So go on about your plan. So far, all you've told me is... If you think one of them means business, you tell me. And I waste the both of them. Is that it? That's the idea. But that's not what I believe will happen. Actually, that would be most unfortunate. It wasn't my fault that they should actually die. No? What then? Well, the heart of the plan is, if both think that a hostile move on either part would mean the end of both of them, well, that should restrain them, shouldn't it? If he kills her, you kill him. If she kills him, you kill her. Both know this in advance, so where's the problem? I gotta hand it to you. You got brains. Oh, I thought you'd never know. The only thing is, there's two of them, you said. How do I stay in the tail of two people? I take it they're not always side by side. Well, that doesn't matter. As long as they know you're watching one of them, they don't have to know which one, do they? As long as they know that one false step on the part of either means curtains for both of them. I guess you're right. Yeah, you must be right. Probably you won't have to kill anybody at all. Oh, I don't mind. No, I never thought you would. How do I get in touch with you if I think one of them is getting out of line? Well, come here and tell me. If there's time. Or phone if there isn't. Okay. Now about the money. I come high, you know. Very high. Don't worry, my darling. The price will be higher than any you've ever dreamed of. Oh, you'll excuse me, the phone. Go ahead. Think over everything I've said. Oh, I will, I will. Hello? Hello. Hello, it's me. Are you alone? Well, not exactly, no. Oh, oh, sorry. Maybe I should call back later. Is it important? Well, to me it is. Not another disagreement. No, no, not so far, but I'm expecting one. I I feel it coming on. Uh, Look, uh, I'll call you back. No, no, hold on. We can talk for a minute or so. You sound nervous. Yeah, I am. You can't tell me why, if you know. Oh, I know, all right. This time I know for sure. I saw it. You saw what? The knife. The knife? What knife? Her knife. She went out and bought a knife. She carries it around with her. I saw it. It's got a blade. Six inches long. And it's sharp. Skinny and sharp. She hasn't tried to use it, has she? No, but she's getting ready to. She's just waiting for the right moment, and then she'll go for me. Look, um, there's someone here right now. Who? Who is it? And Well, no one you know. And if we're lucky, you won't ever have to know. But we're discussing an idea I had, a way to keep you two from killing each other. An idea? You you said you have an idea? We're just in the process of working it out. Well, what is it? What's the idea? Call me back later and I'll tell you once it's finalized. Okay. Now, you'll be sure and be there, won't you? Oh, I'll be here. Because I'm getting plenty scared. Well, try to control yourself and leave everything up to me. You'll come through for us. I know you will. I'm trying. I don't want to die. Call me back in a few minutes. Right. Will do. Well, I suppose you could figure out who that was. One half of the charming couple. The boy. It seems the girl has purchased a knife, a skinny one, very sharp with a blade six inches long. Women go for knives. I've noticed that. Yes, I wonder why. Search me. Well, what do you think of my scheme? It's okay. Foolproof, wouldn't you say? As much as anything ever is. And you'll take care of the, the physical end of it? If the money's right. It will be. So, is it a deal? It's a deal. You really like the idea? It's all right. You'll take the job? I got nothing better to do. You approve of the plan? Sounds okay. Oh, really? I wish you could summon up a little enthusiasm. Lady, I lost my enthusiasm for anything a long time ago. If I ever had any. Oh, he must be calling back. Well, I'll have good news for him. Hello? Hi, it's me. Oh, Oh, it's you. You sound surprised. Well, I am a little. I, uh, I was expecting someone else to call. Who? Oh, never mind. Him? Well, yes, as a matter of fact. I might have known. Is it true you went out and bought a knife? What if I did? A sharp one with a six-inch blade? So what? It's not as though I'm going to use it. Then what did you buy it for? To have it in case. In case what? In case he gets any funny ideas. I see. 
Did he tell you I bought a knife? Well, as a matter of fact, he did on the phone a few minutes ago. Oh, I might have known he would. Why shouldn't he? No reason. Boy, he couldn't wait, could he? Dirty little coward. Wait for what? To defend himself against me. What's he done? That's what I called up to tell you. He's got a gun. Oh, has he? He carries it around with him all the time, stuck in his belt. One of these days. You mark my words. One of these days. Look, I've got someone here right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll hang up. No, no, that's all right. It's just that my... Uh, my friend and I were working out a little plan that might just solve the whole problem. Really? Did you mean it? Well, with my brains and his muscle, call me back. Oh, oh I will, I will. Uh, how soon? In five minutes to do it. Okay, bye. The other half? Yes. Just as hysterical as he was. She wanted to tell me he's bought a gun. Carries it around with him stuck in his belt. Sounds like they both mean business. Oh, but they don't. No, they don't. They don't really. They're just squared off against each other, hostile and suspicious, each waiting for the other to make a move. You could be right. If they both know... Don't you see? If they both know that a wrong move will mean the end for both of them... You already told me I gotta be on my way. You really have to go? I really do. I thought maybe you and I... Nope. Not you and I. Not maybe. Not possibly. Why not? Tell me why not. Because, lady, you scare me. And I don't scare easy, as you very well know. I don't mean to. Must be a talent you have. Something you were born with. So long. See you tomorrow. Ways to be left alone like this, even by a common, ordinary killer like him. We could have stayed for an hour. We could have talked. I'm left with nothing but a cat. A cat who looks at me with contempt. Could it be that behind that icy stare lies a small trace of pity? I'd settle for that. Just a little bit of compassion. I sunk so low I'd settle for that. I need it. Even from a cat. Once in our history, there was a compact organization called Murder Incorporated. At least, uh, so they were named by the media. I'm not sure what its members call themselves, but their sole cold function was to kill, when told and paid to do so. Can it be that the gentleman who has just left the lady so precipitously is a resurrection of that specialized group, a one-man murder incorporated? We'll return shortly with the final act. devised the last plan in a desperate effort to deliver two young people from the threat and the fear of sudden death is a lonely lady, one given to morbid musings on the ways of power and its uses. Out of her isolation and a melancholy, she has evolved a bizarre solution we have elected to call the last plan. It was six weeks ago that I brought the young people together with the man and the plan was laid. Was I right? Will it work? The cat is sleeping, her long body stretched out to its full length, one paw flung across her eyes. And the blue hour is coming on, that last gasp of light before the dark, the lingering of the day that whispers of the night. Alone with the indifferent cat, I think back upon what has happened since the meeting between the man and the young couple and the hatching of the plan. Aren't they supposed to be here by now? Any minute now. Why do I have to meet them anyway? Just this once, I think you should see them face to face. I don't want you to back out and spoil everything. I'm not going to back out. Not at these points. There they are now. 
You just hope they're good for the money. Don't worry, they are. Come in. Come in. Oh, you've got us all excited, this idea you have. Yeah, it better be good. Anybody want coffee? Tea? Something stronger? No, oh, I don't. No, neither do I. All right, then let's get down to cases. This gentleman, he's here because he's going to get to know you very well. All your moods, all your movements, even your thoughts, insofar as that's possible. I'm not going to tell you his name because you won't need it. You're better off without it. But he knows yours, and he knows where you live, where you work, where you play. In short, everything. Why? What for? Yeah, what's the point? He'll be your bodyguard in a rather unique way. That is, he won't protect you day to day, minute to minute, from attack. No, his function is to watch for any seriously threatening gesture from either one of you toward the other. Before the threatening one can go into action, he will kill you both. Both? Kill us both? Yes, that's right. Well, what do you say? How about it? I I don't know what to say. It's, it's such a crazy idea. It's not so crazy. Well, I think it is. Both of us wind up dead. That wasn't what I had in mind. It's not what I have in mind either. I'm not wild about killing off people who haven't done anything. The point of this setup is to keep you both from doing something. That's what you wanted, isn't it? Well, yeah, but... Well, that's exactly what we wanted. Yeah, but I, I, I wouldn't kill her. Then why did you buy a gun? So you wouldn't kill me. I'd never kill you. Then why'd you buy a knife? Hold it. Hold it one cotton pick a minute. You know... I don't know as I want to bother with either of you. Why not? Why don't you? I don't know if you're worth it. If it wasn't for the money. But how much? Ask her. How much? Half of everything you've got. Half? Half of everything? I don't work cheap. I don't know. Half of it's everything. your lives we're talking about, not mine. Our lives? Both of them. But if you want to take chances, go ahead. Be my guess. Well, do you? I don't. Neither do I. Okay, then. We start today. So it was settled. That was six weeks ago. And here I sit wondering if I was as clever as I thought, if anyone is so clever. What was it Nietzsche said? If you gaze long into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. Well, that's the way I feel now. I stare into the unknown, and the unknown stares back. Still, when he reported to me two weeks later, he was almost flippant. It's a piece of cake. You mean that? They're on their best behavior. I got them scared, silly. You have? We have. Between you and me and the plan, they don't dare step an inch out of line. Either one of them. It's a shame to take the money. You've already taken it. And I mean to keep it. Now listen, I work hard for it. Every so often I remind them I'm around. I stroll across their lawn and look in the window. Run into one or both of them out shopping. I tip my hat. I give them a look. Don't worry. They know I'm around. And that if they take one false step, it's the end. I have to hand it to you. I really do. It's a great plan. I couldn't have dreamed it up in a million years. No, you couldn't have. It's not that I'm stupid. Yes, it is. That's just what it is. You're stupid. Just a minute there. What efficient. Big and beautiful and superbly efficient. That's what I love about you. With my brains and your efficiency, we could go far. Don't you think? I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Offhand, I don't think it would work. Well, think about it. What good would it do for me to think about it if I'm stupid? Not that stupid. Look, I better be going. No, no, stay, please. Stay. Gotta get back on the job. They're quiet now. But who knows when one of them might flare up. All seemed to be going so well. Everything progressing according to plan. Both of them were so frightened for their own safety, their own lives. 
they were keeping a tight hold on their own passions. I had been right. The only solution was to keep them afraid to destroy lest they be destroyed. That fear, that dread, that horror was keeping them alive. And then a few weeks after his visit, the phone rang. Yes? Hello? Everything's changed. What? What do you mean? Things are heating up. What are you telling me? The whole plan is deteriorating. It's bad. Will you stop talking like that and tell me what's making you nervous all of a sudden? I'm not nervous. I'm never nervous. Well, you sound nervous. I've got a nerve in my body. That's why you hired me, isn't it? Why are you talking like this? What's going on? He went to an electrical supply house today. I saw him go in. I watched him through the window. Yes, go on. He bought some stuff. What kind of stuff? Fuse caps, detonators, electrical wire. You're sure? I made sure. I went inside. Did he see you? No, not at first, but I was right about the stuff he bought. All he needs now is the explosive. To do what? Blow her up. A car, probably. But he hasn't made a move in that direction, has he? So far, this whole thing could be your imagination. It could be. I thought of that. To be on the safe side, if there is a safe side. I stood near the door where he couldn't help but bump into me on his way out. And did he? He sure did. We were face to face, eye to eye. And he didn't flinch, didn't back away. It was as though I didn't scare him one little bit. He was going to go ahead with what he had in mind. Whatever it was. Whatever. Oh, another thing. Remember she said that he has a gun. I remember. Well, now she has one too. I saw it. That was two weeks ago and I haven't heard from him since. I've been sitting here with my unresponsive cat letting time sit through my fingers. She's staring at me now. Her yellow eyes never seem to blink. Is she trying to read her future in my face, or am I trying to read mine in hers? Perhaps I should call her Cassandra. After Cassandra, daughter of King Priam of Troy, to whom the god Apollo gave the gift of prophecy. And then when he grew angry with her, decreed that though she could foretell the future, she should never be believed. What is the future, Cassandra? Will it be good, or will it be evil? Tell me. Let me in. Let me in. Open the door. All right. I'm coming. Just a minute. Hurry up. Let me in. All right, for heaven's sake. I thought you'd never open come the door. Come in. Come in. Whatever's the matter with you? Look here. What have you got there? Take a look. It's a gun. It's hers. You told me on the phone she'd bought a gun. I wasn't too surprised. She had a knife. He had a gun. She wanted to even things up. That doesn't surprise me. No. Who does this? There's eight guns there. All of them loaded. Some of them his, some of them hers. They're all over the house. In the bedroom, the living room, even the kitchen. And, of course, a neat little revolver in the glove compartment of both their cars. You went through their house? What else was there to do? They were driving me crazy. They were starting to act as though I didn't exist. They ignored me. They treated me as though I was in their way. A nuisance. Something tiresome they ought to get rid of. Certainly they know they can't get rid of you. You're there for good. How could I be sure? Sure of what? That they couldn't get rid of me if they got together. But they wouldn't. They couldn't. You're what keeps them from killing each other. But they were getting to a point where they didn't care. Don't you understand that? They simply didn't care. They didn't care about anything except killing each other. In self-defense. That's what they said. That's what they said. They started to get crazy. I couldn't make any sense out of it. Were they buying guns and knives and fuses and dynamite to defend themselves with? Or were they, were they buying them to kill? I got where I couldn't tell one from the other. They were mixed up together, and I couldn't sort it out. That's why I killed them. You what? I killed them. They were driving me mad. And I killed them. I never told you to do that. 
I don't have to take orders from you. But this means it's all been for nothing. It would have turned out this way anyhow, sooner or later. You don't know that. If you just kept on doing what you were hired to do... I couldn't. Not taking it on yourself to make a judgment you're not equipped to make. You've ruined it all. You've spoiled my perfect plan. What? That's gone down. You don't know how to use Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> had to do it. There was nothing else I could do. You understand I had no control over him, so I killed him. I had to. Didn't I, Cassandra? I did the right thing, didn't I? If you know the future, tell me I did the right thing. Tell me you agree. Tell me you approve. Tell me all will be well. Tell me you're not angry. Tell me you like me. that the inscrutable cat actually killed the lady? That the future contains nothing but death and destruction? You could be right. Of course, you know that what we have just presented is in the nature of a fable, a parable, an allegory, perhaps even a morality tale. It was meant to reflect a part of the ultimate peril under which we all live, all of us, down to the last the very last man, woman, and child. I'll be back shortly. So we have returned to the concepts of Eros and Thanatos, which will triumph. We are faced with a stern injunction, love or perish. And the unbelievable possibility that man, in his infirmity and his helplessness, may embrace Thanatos rather than Eros, may choose to perish rather than love. Our cast included Elspeth Eric, Paul Hecht, Bernard Grant, and Maya Dillon. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next... A red brocade coat? My hands are all... all covered with... If I wipe them on this red coat, nothing will show. Oh, uh, ah, I'm going out of my senses. Ah, ah, good, good, good. A gold watch. Gold chain. Good. What's this? Bracelets. One, two, three. Dozens. These packages must be full of things pawned into my two pockets they go. One after the other. Uh... Oh, my Lord in heaven, sister, who killed you? Someone has come in. To take the back to them also. This is Tammy Grimes, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time. Pleasant dreams.